Section three of the Adventures of Bob White by Thornton W. Burgess. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter nine. Peter has hard work believing his own eyes. When with your eyes you see a thing, yet can't believe it so, pray tell me what you can believe. I'd really like to know. Things are that way sometimes. They are so surprising that it doesn't seem that they can be true. Just ask Peter Rabbit or little Mrs. Peter. Either one will tell you that they have had hard work to believe what their eyes saw. You see, it was this way. Peter knew that somewhere near the dear old briar patch was the home of Bob White. Anyway, Bob had said that it was near there, and he himself was never very far away. So Peter didn't doubt that Bob had told him the truth. No one would stay around one place day after day in the beautiful springtime when everybody was busy housekeeping unless his home was very near. But Peter had looked and looked for that home of Bob White's without ever getting so much as a glimpse of it. He had watched Bob White and had visited every place that he saw Bob go to, but Bob had managed to keep his secret, and Peter was no wiser than before, though he was thinner from running around about so much. Little Mrs. Peter had tried her best to make him see that it was no business of his. You see, she knew just how Mrs. Bob felt about wanting her home a secret for little Mrs. Peter had had many anxious hours when her own babies were very small. Finally, Peter did give up, but it was because he had looked in every place he could think of, and at last had made up his mind that if Bob White really had a nest in the green meadows, it certainly wasn't near the dear old briar patch. Then one morning, a surprising thing happened. Peter was just getting ready to run over to the Laughing Brook when someone right in front of him there in the old briar patch exclaimed, Be careful while you step, Peter Rabbit. Peter stopped short and looked to see who had spoken. There, under a tangle of brambles, was little Mrs. Bob White. Peter was surprised, for he had not seen her enter the dear old briar patch. Oh, said he, then he bowed politely. How do you do, Mrs. Bob White? I'm glad you've decided to make us a call. I hope Bob is very well. I haven't seen him for several days, but I've heard his whistle, and it sounds as if he were feeling very fine. He is, replied little Mrs. Bob. Then she added anxiously, Do please be very careful where you step, Peter. Why, what's the matter? asked Peter, looking down at his feet in a puzzled way. Just then, Mrs. Peter, who had heard them talking, came hurrying up. Mrs. Bob White became more anxious than ever. "'Oh, Mrs. Peter, do, do be careful where you step!' she cried. Mrs. Peter looked as puzzled as Peter did. Just then little Mrs. Bob uttered the softest, sweetest little call, and all at once it seemed to Peter and Mrs. Peter as if the brown leaves which carpeted the dear old briar-patch suddenly came to life and started to run. Peter's eyes almost popped out of his head, and he rubbed them twice to make sure that he really saw what he thought he saw. What was it? Why, a whole family of the funniest little birds scurrying as fast as their small legs could take them to the shelter of Mrs. Bob's wings. Chapter 10 New Tenants for the Briar Patch Who proves himself a neighbor kind will find content and peace of mind. One, two, three, four. Oh, dear, they run so fast I can't count them. Aren't they darlings? I'm so glad you brought them over for us to see, Mrs. Bob. How many are there? cried little Mrs. Peter, as she and Peter watched the tiny little babies of Bob White scamper to the shelter of their mother's wings under the friendly brambles of the dear old briar patch. There are fifteen, replied Mrs. Bob White proudly. My gracious, what a family! exclaimed Peter. I don't see how you keep track of all of them. I should think you would be worried to death. They are a great care, confessed little Mrs. Bob White. 
That is why I have brought them over to the old briar patch. I hope you and Mrs. Peter will not mind if we live here for a while. Until they can fly, it is the safest place I know of. We'll be tickled to death to have you here, declared Peter. We don't own the dear old briar patch, though we've lived here so long we almost feel as if it belongs to us. But of course, anyone who wants to is free to live here. I don't know of anyone we would rather have here than you and your family. By the way, I don't see how you could travel far with such little babies. May I ask where you came from? <laughs> little Mrs. Bob's eyes twinkled. Certainly, she replied. We haven't traveled far. We came straight from our home here. But where was your home? Peter asked the question eagerly, for you remember that he had spent a great deal of time trying to find that home of the Bob Whites. Just over yonder, in that little patch of weeds across the crooked little path, you see it was very handy to the old briar patch, replied Mrs. Bob. What? Peter fairly shouted. Do you mean to say that you have been living so near as all that? Mrs. Bob nodded. I surely have she replied. I've been right here where I could see you every day as I sat on my eggs. Uh, but how did you dare build in such a dangerous place? Why, Reddy and Granny Fox passed within a few feet of you every day. I never heard of such a crazy thing. Peter looked as if he didn't believe it even yet. It was the safest place on the Green Meadows, retorted Mrs. Bob. I should think that by this time you would have learned, Peter Rabbit, that the safest place to hide is the place where no one will look. The proof of it is right here in these babies of mine. <laughs> Aren't they darlings? I sat there day after day and watched you and Reddy and Granny Fox and Jimmy Skunk hunting for me and had many a good laugh all to myself. I knew that not one of you would dream that I would be so foolishly wise as to build my home where it could be so easily found, and therefore you wouldn't look for it there. And I was right. Mrs. Peter chuckled. You were just right, Mrs. Bob, she declared. It is the smartest thing I have heard of, my dear. If Peter doesn't feel foolish, he ought to. I told him that it was none of his business where your home was, but he was so curious that he would keep hunting for it. And to think that all the time it was close by. Don't you feel foolish, Peter? Yes, my dear, I certainly do, replied Peter meekly. But now that I know where it was, I am satisfied, and I'm glad that Mrs. Bob has brought her family to live in the dear old briar patch. I think it will be great fun watching those youngsters grow, and I can't help thinking that this is a great deal safer for them than the home they have just left. That's why I've brought them here, replied Mrs. Bob. As long as they were only eggs, that was the safest place. But now that they have hatched out and can run about, they wouldn't be safe a minute over there. As it is, I expect it won't be long before they will be wanting to get out in the great world, and then my worries will really begin. Bringing up a large family is a great responsibility. It is so, declared Mrs. Peter. Chapter 11 Watch Your Step Watch your step. Be sure you know exactly what lies just before, because if you should careless be, "'Tis certain you would step no more." It wasn't that way with Peter Rabbit. He wasn't afraid that if he didn't watch out he would step no more, not in the old briar-patch, anyway. But he was afraid, dreadfully afraid, that one of Bob White's babies might step no more. It seemed to Peter that they were always just underfoot. It made him nervous. Every time he moved, little Mrs. Bob or Mrs. Peter was sure to cry, Who watch your step, Peter? Or, Don't step on one of those darlings. So every time he moved, Peter looked sharply to see that there wasn't a tiny brown bird hiding under a brown leaf. You know, he wouldn't have stepped on one of them for the world. 
Really, there wasn't half as much danger as their fond mothers seemed to think, for little as they were, those bobwhite babies were very spry and very smart, too. But you know how it is with mothers. They seem to be always expecting something dreadful will happen to their babies. So twenty times a day Peter would hear that warning, Who Watch your step. Still, in spite of this, he was glad that the Bob White family had moved over to the dear old briar patch. It gave him a chance to learn more about the ways of Bob White and his children than he could possibly have learned in any other way. You know, Peter is always anxious to learn, especially about other people. It seemed to him that never had he seen babies grow as did the little Bob Whites. They were everywhere. There were fifteen of them, and Peter often wondered how, under the sun, their mother kept track of all of them. But she did. One thing he noticed, and this was that they obeyed promptly whenever she called to them. If Redtail the hawk came sailing lazily over the old briar patch, watching with sharp eyes to see if anything was going on down there that he didn't know about, little Mrs. Bob would give a warning, and every one of those youngsters would squat down right where he happened to be and not move until she told him he might. So old Redtail never once suspected that the Bob White family was there. When Mrs. Bob called them to her, they came running on the instant. Such obedience was beautiful to see. Then, when they were all nestled under her wings, she would tell them about the great world, and all the dangers that they would have to watch out for when they were big enough to go out into it, and how each one was to be met. As they ran this way and that way in the old briar patch, they picked up tiny seeds. Peter had not supposed that there were so many seeds as those little Bob Whites found. You know, Peter does not eat tiny seeds, and so he never had noticed them before. Mrs. Bob led them about, showing them what seeds were best and what to leave alone. They didn't have to be shown but once. Often they varied their fare by picking tiny insects from the low-hanging leaves and once in a while there would be a struggle between two or more for possession of a worm. Peter always liked to watch this. It was very funny. In a few days there were no bugs or worms to be found in the old briar patch, at least not on or near the ground. The Bob White family had eaten every one. I wish they would live here all the time declared Mrs. Peter. I don't like bugs and worms. They give me a crawly feeling every time I see them. But a growing family must have plenty to eat, and at the end of a week Mrs. Bob led her youngsters forth to hunt bugs and worms and seeds on the green meadows, but never very far from the old briar patch, so that in case of need they could run back to its friendly shelter. And every night she brought them back there to sleep under the friendly brambles. So, after all, it was only for a little while that Peter had to watch his steps, and he was really sorry when he no longer heard that warning every time he moved. You see, he had grown very fond of the little Bob Whites. End of Section 3